All right, students, this is going to be the last part of chapter three, chemical formula and equations. I know this has been a big chapter, but believe me, this chapter is what I like to call the building block chapter, okay? The last thing we're going to do now is chemical equations. How to form chemical equations, how to balance chemical equations, and the best part, chemical equations calculations, okay? Now, before we begin this chapter, students, I just want to say one thing, okay? This chapter, as with everything else, all the calculations depends on one thing, and that thing is, you guessed it, the link, the connection, number of moles, okay? This is what is going to help you solve everything. So, let's start with what a chemical equation is. A chemical equation is used to describe a chemical reaction, okay? So, you have something on the left-hand side. Let's call it LHS for left-hand side. Something happens over here and it becomes something new on the right hand side, okay? Now, this arrow shows the change from the left hand side to the right hand side. How do we go about chemical reactions? There are some basic rules to know, okay, when we form chemical reactions. So, the first rule, all metals will be monoatomic. And what does this mean? It means that they will not, they will only have one atom. This is only when they are by themselves, okay? When they are not combined with anything else, when they are an element, not when they are a compound. So if I have iron metal, it will be Fe. If I have magnesium metal, it will be Mg. If I have sodium metal, it will be Na. When I have calcium metal, it will be Ca. You won't have a charge like Ca2+, plus. no students. You don't express chemical equations with the charge, okay? You express them by themselves like this. Now, second rule. What if I have a gas? So all gases again, by themselves, will be diatomic. What does this mean? Diatomic meaning two atoms, okay? And this is only when they are by themselves. So, if I have hydrogen gas, it's H2. If I have oxygen gas, O2. If I have nitrogen gas, N2. So, you get the picture, right, guys? So this is only when they are by themselves. What happens when they combine? When they combine, we follow the same rules as chemical formulae. Let me give you a simple example to show you what I mean. So, if I tell you that zinc metal, I'll just write this down, zinc metal, reacts with chlorine. I don't even have to mention that it is chlorine, but students, chlorine by itself is always a gas, okay? Chlorine is going to be a gas. So, how do we do this? Zinc metal, we know zinc is a metal, so symbol is Zn. We don't put any plus sign or anything like that. This is a chemical equation, no charges, no signs. Zinc metal reacts. When you react, you plus. Chlorine gas, all gases are diatomic, Cl2. It forms a product. What is that product? This is where you use your chemical formula knowledge. What is zinc Zn plus? Okay, now this information will be given in the, if you, if you know what the charge of zinc is based on the valence electrons, zinc has one electron in its last shell. So remember, should it accept seven or donate one? Donate one. So Zn will be Zn plus. Chlorine in terms of ions, in terms of um, 
representing it in the ion state is Cl minus. So same value, even though it's plus and minus, you have a plus one, minus one. Same number, cancel, cancel. So what do you get? Z, Zn, Cl2. Now, students, I made a mistake over here. Zinc is actually 2 plus, okay? I apologize for that. Let me stress again. Zinc is Zn2 plus. Chlorine is, a uh, chloride ion is Cl minus. So, because of the cross multiplication, we get Zn Cl2, okay? I'm sorry about that, students. I, my apologies. Zn Cl2. Now, we've written down the equation. We need to do something what's called balancing the equation. This is where you look at the coefficients, okay? You count how many atoms you have. So, let's look at the left-hand side. We have one zinc over here. And on the right hand side, we also have one zinc. Then we have two chlorines on the left hand side and two chlorines on the right hand side. The equation is balanced, students. That's it. Now, for something more complex, um, okay, carbon reacting with oxygen. Okay, so I'll just write this down. Carbon reacting with oxygen. So carbon we know is a non-metal, so it's just C, okay? Plus oxygen is a gas, O2. Now we need to found the products. We all already know it's going to be carbon dioxide because this is an easy example. But why is it carbon dioxide? Why did we get CO2? It's not because of the two over here, students. It's because we have to look at the ion form, the, um, you know, the, the charge. So let's just look at carbon for a second. Carbon has six electrons. So 2.4. It has four electrons in its last shell, in its valence shell. So does it gain four or does it lose four? We don't know. But whatever happens, it's going to have a flow of four, right? It could be plus four or minus four. Okay, so let's just hold on to this. Oxygen we know is oxide O2 minus because its uh, electron configuration is 2.6. It, it has to gain two electrons. So C4 and O2 minus. When you cross multiply, you should get C2O4, right? But guess what? When the numbers are a factor of each other, you can cancel them out, you know? So 2 and 4, what is the factor? 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. This is making it simpler. So you have C2 and O1 minus. Now you cannot sp split it anymore. So the one goes down, the two goes down this way, CO2. Do you understand the logic between the students? Now we check the balancing. We have one carbon over here on the left hand side, one carbon on the right hand side. Two oxygens on the left hand side, two oxygens on the right hand side. Balanced, perfect, set, okay? More examples. Uh, okay, this one is interesting. So we have hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. Okay, so now we don't have individual elements. We have hydrogen and chlorine together. And we have sodium and hydroxide coming together. So compound, compound. So for compounds, we have to combine them in their ionic form. Hydrogen is H plus. Chlorine is Cl minus. So we just get HCl. Reacts with plus sign. What is sodium hydroxide? Sodium is Na plus. 
hydroxide is OH minus. So we get NaOH. Now, what will our product be? Hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. What do we do next? Hydrogen is positive. Chloride is negative. Sodium is positive. Hydroxide is negative. The positive from here or from here will react with the negative from here. The positive from here will react with the negative from here. So what do you end up getting? Sodium with chlorine. Sodium and chlorine. Na plus and Cl minus. So you get NaCl plus hydrogen with hydroxide. When you add an extra hydrogen to OH, you get two hydrogens and one oxygen. What is that? It's a common compound we all know, H2O. Do you see this students? Does this make sense? Now, we need to balance our equation to check if it's okay. We have one hydrogen, one hydrogen. We have two hydrogens on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have two hydrogens. So hydrogen is balanced. We have one chlorine on the left hand side, one chlorine on the right hand side. Chlorine is balanced. We have one sodium on the left hand side, one sodium on the right hand side. Sodium is balanced. We have one oxygen on the left hand side and one oxygen on the right hand side. Oxygen is balanced. Therefore, the equation is balanced, students. So, we now see the difference between having two compounds formed together and something called displacement where the positive from here reacts with the negative from here and the positive from here reacts with the negative from here. So this is sometimes difficult to explain students. The more you do, the more you get used to it, okay? So I'm going to do a few more equations and focus on balancing these equations, okay? So iron metal reacts with copper 2 chloride. So iron metal reacts with copper 2 chloride. Now students, you might, like previously we talked about this, why is there a 2 in front of copper? Don't worry about that. We will cover that in periodic table, which is our next chapter. So let's just write down what we've learned so far. Iron metal, it's by itself. So Fe, okay, reacts with plus sign. Copper 2 chloride. This is a compound of copper and chlorine. We know that copper is going to be Cu2 plus because of the 2. And chlorine is going to be Cl minus chloride ion. So cross multiply, we get CuCl2 gives us what product do we get? We learnt about this guys. The positive from here reacts with the negative from here. The positive from here, because copper is a metal, it's going to be positive. It has nothing to react with over here. So what happens? Copper becomes by itself, okay? So what about Fe and Cl2? They are combining, so we need to look at their ionic form, okay? Iron is Fe3+, plus. chloride is Cl-, minus. what do we get? FeCl3. Now, uh, one second guys, let me just scratch this off for a second. Um, give some space. FeCl3 plus, what do we have left? Copper and it's by itself. Whenever a metal is by itself, it's just by itself. No charge, no number, no nothing. Now we have to balance the equation. Check if it's balanced. The previous equations were all balanced, straightforward. Now guys, here's where the fun starts. We have one iron on the left hand side. We have one iron on the right hand side, balanced. We have one copper on the left hand side. 
we have one copper on the right hand side balanced now we have two chlorine on the left hand side and three chlorine on the right hand side oh shit oops sorry guys oh no what do we do so let's think how do we make this balance this chlorine balance we need to add a number in front of one of the uh, compounds but what number do we add so let's just say I put a 2 over here then I'll have 4 chlorines but I have 3 chlorines over here so we somehow have to make it balanced think guys think what if I put a 3 over here if I put a 3 over here I'll have 6 chlorine then I put a 2 over here I'll also have 6 chlorine then I'll have two iron. So shouldn't I put a two over here? Okay, now I'm, I know I'm going too fast. Let me try doing this, okay? I put, um, let me think about this for a second. I put a three here, okay? Just, we're just, this is just trial and error. I put a three here. So now I have six chlorine on the left left hand side. I have three chlorine over here. What if I put a 2 here? Now I have 6 chlorine on the left, 6 chlorine on the right. Perfect. But now I have 3 copper over here on the left. So how do I get 3 copper on the right? I just put a 3 in front of this copper. So copper is balanced, chlorine is balanced. I have a 2 in front of this iron on the right hand side. So I need to put a 2 in front of my iron on the left hand side. Do you see how this works guys? These numbers that we are putting in front are called stoichiometric coefficients, okay? Let's just call them coefficients. Let's not use big words. Coefficients. Coefficients are numbers in front of each um, reactant or product. Okay, students? Now, balancing may seem a little tricky now, but the more you do it, the better you get, okay? So we're gonna just keep doing more examples. Um, okay, something a little more tricky. Copper nitrate, let me just write this down guys, and guys please work this out as well, okay. Copper 2 nitrate reacts with, oh, no, 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 sorry. Um, Sorry, let me just erase this. Oh God, really? Okay, never mind. Make a new page. Ah, computer is so confusing sometimes. Okay, so guys, um, lead to nitrate. Reacting with potassium iodide react potassium iodide now so this plus this lead is a metal its formula is pb and uh, because it says lead 2 and it's combining with nitrate we are combining them together Lead is not by itself, it's with nitrate. So we need to look at the ion form and then make it a compound. Lead is Pb2 plus, nitrate is NO3 minus. So what do we get? This is a 1 goes down, this 2 goes down. Does the 2 only affect the O? We talked about this, it affects both the N and the O. So we'll have to put a bracket around this. So Pb, open bracket, NO3. 3 close bracket 2 plus potassium iodide potassium and iodine potassium is K plus iodide is I minus so 1 and 1 we get Ki what do we get for the products so positive with negative positive with negative positive with negative. So lead with iodide. Lead is Pb2 plus. Iodide is I minus. 
So cross multiply, we get PB I2 plus potassium with nitrate. What is potassium? K plus. What is nitrate? NO3 minus. Cross multiply, we get KNO3. Are you understanding this, students? All right, I hope so, guys. So, this is, uh, this is what happens. Are we done with this? No, we have to balance the equation. So, let's check it out. We have 1 PB over here. We have 1 PB over here. Okay, that's cool. Now, some people like to, when they balance, they like to take NO3 to, as, as one unit. What I like to do is I like to separate them into each element. So, we have 2 nitrogen because nitrogen gets a 2 from here. We have 2 nitrogens on the left hand side, but we have 1 nitrogen on the right hand side. So, how do we make it 2 nitrogens? We add a 2 here. So, now we have 2 nitrogens on the left and on the right. We have 3 times 2, we have, meaning we have 6 oxygens on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we have 3 times 2, which is 6 oxygen. So, oxygen settled. Pot we have 1 potassium here, but now because of this 2, we have 2 potassiums here. How do we deal with it? Simple. Put a 2 here. So, potassium is settled and we have 2 iodines now on the left and 2 iodines on the right. So, that's it students. This is how you balance the equation. So, PbNO32 plus 2Ki gives us PbI2 plus 2KNO3. That's it. So, the more you practice balancing equations, the better you get at it. And uh, don't worry, you guys are getting this. You keep watching these videos, everything is going to make sense. And uh, as I told you a day before SPM Chemistry, we're going to go all out past your papers. So, just chill guys and stay with me, okay? So, the next thing we're going to talk about very quickly is qualitative versus quantitative aspects of chemical equations. Now, the word qualitative is basically what you can see, okay? The word quantitative, think quantity, is something that you can count. So, what can you, basically what this is asking us is, what can you see from a chemical equation and what can you count from a chemical equation. So, in a chemical equation, I know I didn't write this earlier on in my equations, but always or typically a chemical equation has the state, okay, the physical state of the products and the reactants. I'll just write this down, physical state. of products, I'll just call it P, and reactants R. What does this mean? If I write this equation down, carbon S plus O2 G gives us, so 2 here, 2 CO2 G. Now, what can I read from this equation? I can see that, okay, carbon, which is a solid, because there's an S here, that reacts with oxygen, which is a gas, because of the G, gives me two carbon dioxide, which is a gas. So, from the equation, the chemical equation, the qualitative aspect that I see is the physical state, okay? But don't worry, guys, when you write your equations, you don't have to put this down. When I took uh, SPM, when I used to write chemical equations, they did not cut marks for not putting down the state. So, don't worry about that. The second thing that you see, you can identify the reactants and the products. But this is pretty obvious, right guys? You already knew this. 
So from here I can see that my reactants are carbon and oxygen. Remember reactants are everything on the left hand side of the equation and my products or my product is carbon dioxide everything on the right hand side of the arrow okay so if i just ask you on a on a you know on the exam name two qualitative aspects of a chemical equation so think okay don't just jump into it what did sir john say qualitative aspects what we can see from a chemical equation oh yes from a chemical equation we can see the state of uh, the physical state of the reactants and the products and we can also determine what the reactants and the products are. You see guys, it's that simple. So that's it for qualitative. Quantitative doesn't have anything that you need to write down. Um, quantitative is basically just calculations and these are really, really fun calculations. You guys have been enjoying my calculations, I know, at least I, I know. So now we're going to do chemical equation calculations, which I told you. What does it depend on? Of course, of our best friend here, number of moles. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down equations. I'm going to tell you the question as always you guys read uh, write down the question think about it pause and unpause to see the solution all right guys so I have an equation here uh, in the in the questions they give you the equation but now I want you to practice equations. so we're going to do this together okay I'll just tell you the uh, equation by word and we write it down so potassium metal reacts with bromine gas. Potassium metal with bromine gas. And our bromine, fluorine, chlorine, iodine, all these ins are always gases. So potassium metal by itself, K. No plus, no minus, nothing. Plus sign because it's reacting. Bromine gas, Br2. These two react, what do we get? Do we, what, how do we do this? We look at the ionic form. Potassium is K plus, bromine or bromide is Br minus. So one and one, we get KBr. Is the equation balanced? We have one potassium on the left, one potassium on the right. We have two bromine on the left, but one bromine on the right. How do we make this 2? Do we add a 2 here? Of course not. Never do that students. You only add on the side. So put a 2 over here. Now we have 2 bromine but wait a second. Now we have 2k as well. How do we get balance this k? Put a 2 here. So 2k plus Br2 gives us 2kBr. Now back to the question. How many moles of potassium are needed to react with 0 0.5 mole of bromine gas. Okay, before we get into the question guys, what we are doing now is we are comparing uh, coefficients, okay? So now we have this 2 here with this 1 here and this 2 here. So whatever the number of moles I get over here, is going to equal the number of moles over here. Why is that? Because both of them have a number 2. Now logically, whatever the number of moles I have over here is going to be double the number of moles I have over here. Why? Because I have a 2 here, I have a 1 here. That's how we relate guys, that's how we relate stuff in a chemical equation. These constants serve as a comparison tool. So let's get into the, uh, the question. How many moles of potassium are needed to react with 0 0.5 mole of bromine gas? So they've given us the mole of bromine. We want to find the mole of potassium. Think about it for a second. We have the number 1 over here. We have the number 2 over here. That means whatever the moles of bromine are, 
the moles of potassium will be double. The question told us we have 0.5 mole of bromine gas. That means we have how many moles of potassium? 0.5 times 2, which is 1 mole of potassium. You see guys, it's all about number of moles. Next question. And just so you know guys, this, uh, these kind of chemical equations involves molar mass, involves molar volume, involves the you know, number of molecules, number of atoms, number of ions, all that good stuff that we learnt earlier. So, uh, another, e another question, they've given us the equation but as always, Sir John is going to make you practice the equation. Zinc metal with nitric acid, okay, so zinc metal, zinc metal reacting with nitric acid, zinc metal by itself Zn plus nitric acid, now guys you don't know what nitric acid chemical formula is yet, we'll cover that in um, acids and bases, so for now I'll just write it down, HNO3, okay. So Zn plus HNO3, what do we get? Obviously zinc, the positive, is going to combine with the negative, which is nitrate over here. And this positive H is going to react with, but there's nothing negative over here. So hydrogen will be by itself. So when zinc reacts with nitric acid, uh, with nitrate, sorry, we have to look at the ionic form. Zn2 plus for zinc, NO3 for nitrate. So cross multiply, this 2 goes for both zinc and nitrate. So Zn, NO3, 2. That's a 3, guys. <laughs> and then plus hydrogen by itself. Is it just going to be H? No, guys. Think. Gases by themselves always H2, diatomic. Hydrogen is a gas by itself is H2. Okay, now check the equation to see if it's balanced. 1 Zn, 1 Zn, settle. 1 H, we have 2 H's over here. How do I balance this? Put a 2 here. Now we have 2 H's. I have 2 nitrogens over here. Here I have also 2 nitrogens settled. I have 6 oxygens, 3 times 2, and I have 6 oxygens, 6 times 2. So Zn plus 2 HNO3 gives us ZnNO3 2 plus H2. The question guys, what is the mass of zinc needed to produce 2.4 decimeter cube of hydrogen gas at room conditions? So we want to find the mass of zinc, okay, needed to produce 2.4 decimeter cubes of hydrogen gas at room conditions. Room conditions, so we, we just do this by analyzing it step by step. Room conditions meaning molar volume is 24 decimeter cube per mole, correct? Correct. We want to find the mass of zinc. We are given the uh, volume of hydrogen gas and we know the molar volume of hydrogen gas. So let's just write that down. Molar volume is 24 because it's room conditions equals to the mass uh, the volume of hydrogen gas which is 2.4 decimeter cube over number of mole connecting factor. We need to find this. How do we find these number of moles? 24x equals to 2.4, x equals to 2.4 over 24. What is 2.4 over 24? 0 0.1 mole. That means that this is 0 0.1 mole. And is there a number in front of this? Nothing. Basically, that means there's the number 1 here, right? We are talking about zinc. Now, we want to find the mass of zinc. What number is in front of zinc? Nothing. That means 1 as well. So both of them have the numbers 1 in front of them. 
So the relationship guys, 1 and 1 is the same. Therefore, if H hydrogen gas is 0.1 moles, zinc will also be 0.1 moles. If hydrogen gas is 0.1 moles, what will nitric acid be? 0.1 times 2 because of the 2 here. If hydrogen gas is 0.1, what will zinc nitrate be? The moles. Of course, 0 0.1 because the number 1 is in front of this. So we get the logic. 0 0.1 moles of hydrogen, we get 0 0.1 moles of zinc. So now, we want to find the mass of zinc. Let's think about this mass. What formula? I have the number of moles. I need to find the mass. Don't I need ah, molar mass? Molar mass equals to mass over or mass over mole. Do I have the molar mass of zinc? Yes, the nuclear number of zinc. If you don't, they'll normally give it to you. Molar mass of zinc is 65. We want to find the mass, which is, let's call it, just call it mass over number of moles was how much just now? 0 0.1. So to find the mass, cross multiply. 65 times 0 0.1 is 6.5 and the unit of mass is grams. Settle guys, this is classic questions they love to ask on SPM, okay? And we're gonna see these calculations on almost all the advanced chapters. They can give you any tricky question, but once you know how to play with number of moles and the coefficients, you guys will be good to go. Let's do uh, three more questions, guys. That's it, then we'll be done with this chapter, promise you. And you can tell yourself, I'm at least going to get at least a C in chemistry after three chapters out of 14. That's a big jump. Imagine after six chapters or so, confirm B guys. Anyways, and that's at the very least. So next question, ethene gas burns in excess oxygen according to the following equation. Now, I'll write down the equation. Don't worry, you don't know what ethene is. This is something in form five, carbon compounds. Ethene is C2H4. Ethene reacts with oxygen. This is called a combustion reaction. Just remember this word, guys. Uh, whenever something like uh, a hydrocarbon, which is ethene, reacts with oxygen, the products are always, and I repeat, always carbon dioxide and water. Why? Don't worry about it, okay? This is form five stuff, we'll come to it later. So I've written down the equation, but I need to balance it. Two carbons on the left, one carbon on the right. So put a two here, carbon is balanced. Four hydrogen on the left, over here, two hydrogen. So put a two here, now we have four hydrogen, balanced. Two oxygen over here, here we have four oxygen because of two times two, and here we have two oxygen. Four plus two, six oxygen. How do I balance it? Just put a three here. So C2H4 plus three O2 gives us two CO2 plus two H2O. The equation is balanced, beautiful. Let's look at the problem. Find the volume of carbon dioxide. Find the volume of carbon dioxide released at STP. STP is standard temperature and pressure. So immediately, I know, my molar volume is 22.4 decimeter cube per mole. But they'll actually give this to you in the question. I'm just helping you analyze, guys. So find the volume of carbon dioxide released at STP if 42 grams of ethene, they've given us the, the mass of ethene, 42 grams of ethene is burnt completely. So, guys, don't even think too much. Connection, connection. Number of moles, our best friend here, our lifesaver. So, we want to find the volume of carbon dioxide. We'll get there step by step. What have they given us? They've given us the mass of ethene, 42 grams. Can I get the number of moles of ethene? Obviously, since we're dealing with mass, molar mass equals to mass over mole. 
Can we get the molar mass of ethene? Obviously, uh, carbon is, carbon's mass is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, Oc uh, hydrogen's mass is 1, 1 times 4 is 4, 24 plus 4 is 28. This is the molar mass of ethene equals to the mass which is 42 over number of moles is x. So 28x equals to 42, x equals to 42 over 28, x or number of moles equals to 1.5 moles. We know the number of moles here is 1.5. We want to find the volume of carbon dioxide. So we want to find this. What is the relationship guys? There's a 1 here. There's a 2 here. So the coefficient of 1 gives us how many moles? 1.5 moles. Here we have a coefficient of 2. How many moles do we get? This times this divided by this. You see the logic guys? So what do we get? 1.5 times 2 is 3. 3 divided by 1 is 3. So we get 3 moles here. Okay guys, do you understand this guys? Alright, so 3 moles and what does the question want? Find the volume of carbon dioxide released at STP. Molar volume is volume over mole. We have the molar volume to be 22.4 equals to volume, which is what we want to find over number of moles, which is 3. 22.4 times 3 is 67.2. The unit of volume, decimeter cube. You see how simple this is, guys? Uh, the reason I did this, by the way, is to help you see the relationship, okay? I got x to be or the number of moles here to be 1.5 and we know that the number in front of here is 1. These numbers, these coefficients are so important. What if I got the moles here to be 1.5? The moles here to be 1.5 and I have to find this for example. So it would be 3, mo three the number 3 is associated to 1.5. This is just an example. So if I want to find this, 2 will give me how many moles? 1.5 times 2 divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I'll get 1 mole. You see the relationship, guys? Always think analytically. Chemistry is our friend, not our enemy. So two more questions, then you are a master of chemistry, at least master to at least get a C. So we have aluminium metal reacting with copper. I'll just call it aluminium reacting with copper one oxide. Or is it copper two ox co sorry copper two oxide. What happens? So by now we are an expert. We need to form a chemical equation. Aluminium metal by itself is just Al, no charge, no nothing. Copper 2 oxide, these are combining copper and oxygen. Copper 2 means Cu2 plus, oxide is O2 minus, 2 and 2 cancel, so we get CuO. Al plus CuO gives us, let me just write this, uh, let me just do it on another page, okay? Aluminium plus copper 2 oxide, so Al plus CuO. Now, what do we get? We don't know. But positive from here reacts with negative from here. Positive from here reacts with, but there's no negative here. So copper metal will be by itself. Aluminium and oxygen combining together. Aluminium is Al3 plus in its ion form. Oxide is O2 minus. Down, down. Al2O3 and copper metal by itself. Whenever a metal is by itself, it's just by itself. Right, guys? Balance. One aluminium, two aluminium. Put a two here. Settle. One copper over here, 
one copper over here, settle. One oxygen here, three oxygens here, not settle. Put a three here. Three oxygens, three oxygens. But now we have three coppers here, so three coppers here. I think the equation is balanced. Uh, let me just check. 2Al plus 3CuO gives us Al2O3 plus 3Cu. Perfectly balanced. Now, the question. 1.35 grams of aluminium reacts with excessive copper 2 oxide powder to produce aluminium oxide powder and copper. See, this question tells you how to balance the equation, how, what, how the equation should be and then you put it in and balance. So, now the question, find the number of copper atoms produced. The number of copper atoms, oh, atoms, let me think. How, do, how would I find number of atoms? If I remember chapter 3, if I want to get from, again, my, I don't even have to say it, my best friend, number of moles to number of particles, I have to multiply with Avogadro number, right? Which is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, right? Exactly. But what am I missing? I'm missing the number of moles. But how do I get the number of moles? In the question, I said that 1.35 grams of aluminium. So, relationship guys, we have the mass of aluminium. Do we know, can we get the number of moles? Of course, because molar mass equals to mass over moles. Molar mass of aluminium is 27. Will you multiply, actually I forgot to mention this, very important. Will I multiply 27 with 2 because of this 2 over here? Never students, never ever do that. You only multiply when you have a 2 at the bottom like this, okay, or a 3 like this. These numbers 2, 3, the 1 here and this 3 are coefficients helping you to form relationships between the reactants and the products. So don't multiply the uh, molar mass with this 2. So molar mass is just going to be 27 for aluminium. Mass is 1.35 grams over number of moles. So 27 times number of moles equals 1.35 grams. Moles equals to 1.35 over 27. So number of moles equals to 0 0.05 moles. We want to find the number of copper atoms. To get the number of copper atoms, we need the number of moles. How do we get that? Relationship. 2 gives us 0 0.05 moles. So 3 gives us how many moles? 0 0.05 times 3 divided by 2. How much do we get? 0 0.0 seven five moles of copper now that we have the moles of copper can we get the number of atoms of course 0 0.075 which is the number of moles times Avogadro's constant 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 gives us how much 4.515 times 10 to the power of 22 atoms if for whatever reason, just, just saying, if there was a 2 here, you have to multiply this answer by 2 because it's atoms. If it's molecules, we just leave it as it is. But we talked about this, right guys? Right. So that's it students. This is the end of chapter 3. We've done a lot, but you guys are officially experts. Congratulations. See you on the next video, Periodic Table. Please, please memorize the first 20 elements, okay? You will thank me for this. Bye, guys.